In Genesis 26, 18, it tells us Isaac dug again the wells of Abraham. Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm your host again, Gene Bailey. Listen, today you're in for a treat. You're going to hear the true story of what happened not that long ago. You know, we have an opportunity here. We talk about revivals all the time, about what God did in the past. I mean, we go way back there and we go fairly recent. Well, this is happening just the other day. Okay, so with me, my special guest, Jose Juan Riesco. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to start, this is current event story. And really, you may not think this is a revival story, but when you came up to me, Jose, it was July 3rd mm, yes. uh, at, here at the tent meeting, and we were having, we were getting ready to watch fireworks, mm -hmm. and you started telling me the story, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. You know, this is an amazing story of what God done. So let's start, not all the way at the beginning, but you're, you're living in Chicago. Yep. And we've got a deli. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so let's talk about your family, what happened Absolutely. Uh, right there. Absolutely. So our family uh, moved to Chicago in the 60s, uh, opened up a business that was really successful um, uh, in 1980, ran it for 20 years, and then in 2011 opened up their second business called Nini's Deli. Uh, my brother helped launch it, and then I took over a couple years later. Uh, well, by God's grace, the business was super successful. Um, thank God. Uh, we had partnerships with Nike. Uh, we had partnerships with Adidas, all different wow. big companies all over yeah, so, the... So the deli was really one of the top, was rated real high. Right? Correct, yeah. So our restaurant was rated number one in the city on Yelp, and we were uh, in the top 30 uh, in the nation on Yelp. Uh, close to 1,000 reviews with a five-star average, by, by God's grace. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Yeah. Kind of, I kind of want to go there now. <laughs> you know, anyway, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> it's time to eat. Okay, so Jose, so tell me what's going on. You're you're there at the deli. Sure. You kind of go in and out, and mm -hmm. so tell me. Let's let's get into this story. Listen, you're not going to believe this. If you haven't hit DVR, DVR <laughs> this in because you're gonna you there need you to go. hear this. I'll All right. Go. All right. So take us what happened. Sure. So I come there to preach. My brother's um, asking for help, and my pastor's like, "We got to go support your brother." Well, do we want to tell him about the commenting? Yeah, uh, the sure. initial comments. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we, let him do this part. So when when everything happened with George Floyd, we had received pressure uh, on social media due to our big following to make a a post standing uh, um, with the BLM movement, and uh, we've always told folks that we're Christian uh, right. at our business. Uh, my personal Instagram bio said disciple of Jesus Christ. People have gotten saved at our restaurant. We've always been willing to preach and love people and, and to serve folks despite gender, color, sure, anything like that. We set our beliefs down to serve other people for 10 years. Mm -hmm. in, so they were really wanting you to say something along the lines of you're in supporting BLM. Correct. Okay. We had literal messages saying, why haven't you posted hashtag BLM and why haven't you donated to our funds? Mm. Literally. Still and then and then before I even had a chance to respond to that, they said, open up your wallet and make a post. Those are the literal wow. words that were told to us. Um, from At that point, it was about 10, 20 people. Um, within moments, we had, I had felt in my spirit, I was like, no, this is a time when I cannot uh, succumb and just, yeah. just um, side with them for the sake of my business. I, I know that the Bible says that whoever tries to save their life will lose their life. Whoever loses their life will gain it in the name of yeah. Jesus. And so, so, so you felt like this was right from the beginning. You felt like this is time to take a stand. Well, it took a moment. At yeah. first I was like, well, maybe I should, I should just part with, I side, side with them. And then almost minutes later, I felt conviction in my spirit. And I knew this was my now, moment. Now, Jose, did you know about this? I knew very little. I saw the initial post. I did not know the weight of it until yeah. my pastor um, and our staff, um, I'm a pastoral intern, and our staff meeting on Thursday, which was like a day or two later, right? What was that? It was on Tuesday. Yeah, right? yeah, roughly. Like so, like, about later. two days later, he starts telling us about it, and I didn't know the weight of it. Like, your brother's getting a lot of pressure on social right. media, and he took a stand for Jesus. And then yeah. my pastor, during the meet, in the middle of the meeting, is like, okay, we're going to make a Facebook Live to, to uh, support your brother. I'm like, okay, praise God, let's do it. And then that caught a lot of traction. Like, I mean, we were talking on there, people were getting crazy on there, uh, very disrespectful. Yeah, right. I mean, people were even posting por 
pornographic uh, pictures and things like that, even when right. we tried to dialogue with people. There yeah. was no dialogue with them. Right. Yeah. It was them being lewd, violent, disrespectful from the get-go before even the actual day of the preaching. Right, so what we said to them was, we love Jesus Christ, thus all human beings are made in the image of God. Right. Not just black lives, all lives. And uh, we made that very clear to them that we believe in the state and the statement Black Lives Matter, but we don't partner or walk alongside or sit with the movement BLM Inc. Mm -hmm. When we said that, there was massive pushback. Right. Our church decided to make a, a live stream so we can all come together and support the business. Um, and then we, they had made it very clear, BLM is gonna protest your business, we're gonna burn your business down, we're gonna come for your church, we're going to um, dox all of your church members, which they started to do shortly after that. Well, explain doxing. So doxing is um, when folks uh, like call your employer, say, tell your employer like, hey, your employee is racist or something yeah. like that. Um, and they try to get you out of your position essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So they made it very clear, we're gonna protest and we're gonna riot. <laughs> So you were like, actually, you're going out there to preach mm -hmm. right, on a Saturday. Yeah, so no, this was actually Friday, Friday morning. Friday, Friday morning. So we had the live stream Friday, uh, Thursday night, real late with my pastor talking. I believe in the statement, Black Lives Matter. It's the movement we have an issue with because it of carries course. with it all of these other connotations like defunding the police, destroying the nuclear family, supporting what we would consider perverse lifestyles and making it normative. Well, long story short, while we were doing that, and maybe if, if you want to hand it over to Brother Juan and Nini's Deli, a Christian business in our church started getting pressured to join the flow of BLM. And then from there, a firestorm started. Early Friday uh, morning, my pastor's like, we got to go support your brother. Yeah. yeah. So I go over there. They're going to outside my business. And yeah. I didn't, again, I didn't know the weight of it. He, yeah. he understood it more than me. He got there at 7 a.m. I got there before everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With my mic ready to go. And I didn't see anyone there, so I'm like, oh, well, it doesn't seem like much. So I actually helped my brother in the business, um, helped do whatever. All my employees walked out that morning. Right, they all left. They oh, all left wow. that morning, except our two Christian brothers from the, from the church. church. That so us. I just said, okay, I'm going to help out. My brother's like, help out. And then around 9-ish is when my brother said, let's go out there and preach. I said, okay, bro. It's your, pro you know, it's your business. So he sent me out there to preach. And within a couple minutes, a young man, David, gives his life to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, thank you for supporting Nini's Deli. Praise God. My parents were both immigrants came here by God's grace, worked hard, and have set this up for us. And by God's grace, we're here sharing the good news about Jesus Christ. Man, we love you. The simple good news about Jesus is this, my friend, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again. Have you ever heard that before? You never heard that before? Okay. The Bible says this in John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, the thing you have to come to grips with is that you're a sinner. Have you ever heard that before? Would you agree that you're a sinner? Okay, yeah, the Bible says if you lied, you're a sinner. Is that everybody? That's everybody. So my friend, Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again. Do you want to put your faith in him and be forgiven of your sins or do you want to go to hell? Which one is it? Oh man, we'd love to pray for you. Hey bro, let's go pray for this guy. He wants to put his faith in Christ. David, right? We love you, David. Man, this is not an accident. Here, give him one of these. Invite him to the church, pray for him. Can these brothers pray for you? To receive Jesus, hey man, look at that. Hey, look at how God's moving. You see that? See what the devil meant for bad, God used for good. This young man, David, always wanted, already wants to give his life to Christ. Come on. I'm thinking Minutes. I'm gonna be on revival radio right now. <laughs> it's, gonna, yeah, it's, gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be a revival here. Yep, that's exactly. Bunch what we're talking. All right, so let's pause right here. Yep. Well, you, you knew about revival radio back then. Of course. Then. Yeah. Yes. All right. So tell, explain that connection. Sure. Well, um, when Reinhard Bonnke died, which is a hero to our church, you know, I really looked up to him. I read his book, and that was what led me to your guys' uh, YouTube. And I started watching, I've watched probably every episode since then. Oh, really? I really got fired up with reading Reinhard Bonnke's book and listening to you guys. Uh, and my pastor's always ta taught us stuff about William J. Seymour, yep. Wigglesworth. He talks about these brothers. We know our Leonard heritage. Ravenhill. Yeah our, yeah, our pastor talks about these. You've got to know these men and uh, women of God who came before us. So it just clicked. You know, it was like the same spirit kind of thing. So that got me fired up. Um, even more, I've always felt the call to be an evangelist. Our church street preaches normally. That's so normal for us. Yeah. We're known for doing that. There's times where there's 10 times in a week we'll right, go out right. preaching. 
So this just fired me up, learning about Reinhard Bonnke, learning uh, what you're talking about, how George Whitfield started as a yep. street preacher. So we've already been street preachers. It just added more fire to my yeah. flame. You're stoking the so, flame. Yeah, 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 like what Paul tells <laughs> Timothy, I'm like, man, I'm getting fired up. Well, he only follows three YouTube channels. Nah, maybe uh, a little more now. Kenneth yeah. Copeland, my church, yeah. and you guys. And That's one, okay. You can, you can yeah. follow those. <laughs> <laughs> and one Christian bodybuilder. But, yeah, so when I'm out there, I'm like, man, this is awesome. These people are going to get saved. That's yeah, going to yeah. be a, a, a miraculous time. And God actually told me right before that that I was going to go viral on something. And I thought I was going to have a video of someone getting yeah. healed, a demon coming out, or having a, a revival like that. So, you, so you're out there on the streets yep. on this Friday morning being yes, the one. You, yes. are, you are actually being the one. Right. And you, somebody, this guy gets saved yeah, David, yep. Yep. right Five away. minutes within David Couple gets minutes, saved. Yeah. So, so what happened next? Well, what happened next was we could feel the pressure coming. It People started, started slow. Mo- it so started slow. Go so, ahead. You so want to so he would preach, and then some neighbors would, would come out of their houses. Jesus. Then he would preach some more, and uh, and a person on their bike would come and video record him preaching. Right. Now, all of a sudden, there was two neighbors three people on their bike, and four customers listening. to Because we still had customers coming in and out the business. Right, right, four right. customers listening. Then it turned to 20 people standing in front. Then it turned to 30 people standing in front. Right. And within about, well, like 30 minutes in, I looked, I, looked at, I looked at my brother, and some more people from our church started coming and started preaching. And one of the two people that didn't quit the business was one of our brothers from the church. And I looked at him. He's a powerful man of God. Yeah. He's been getting trained up for many years now. He's been saved for like 15 years and he's only like 20 22 <laughs> yeah. you know so he's been saved most of his life going hard for jesus and i looked at him and i said young man have you ever been paid to preach <laughs> and he said no sir i have not i said well i want you to go out there and preach your heart out and don't even clock out stay right. on the clock right. you're getting paid to preach today okay so, so wait a minute let me let me interrupt you right there so you're out there and you've been preaching and you've already got somebody, David, his name, he gets saved in the first few minutes. So you got to be feeling pretty good about what's happening right here. We really were feeling really good. I was fired up, man. I was, I'm telling you, I'm thinking I'm going to be on the next revival radio. Yeah, come on That's literally what he thought. (laughs) And and then the Lord tells me, the same Holy Spirit told me to say John 3, 16 to John and explain the gospel to him, told me to rebuke the church off of Galatians 6 for partnering with the Black Lives Matter movement, for trying to be man pleasers and for... What is he saying, Galatians? The only reason you try to get people circumcised is so they, they can avoid being persecuted for right. the cross of Christ. Right. So I say the only reason you guys are following these people is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ, yeah. which calls out sin. So I first call out the church because the Bible says, you know, judgment starts, first starts in the house of God. Yeah. And then the same Holy Spirit tells me, get into Romans 1, verse 18 with them. Oh, well, when you know the Lord tells you Romans 1, 18, when he starts, <laughs> uh, the yeah. wrath of God is on you guys. Come on. I knew it was about to turn, or at least... They were about to get addressed. But John 7, 7 says this. Jesus says, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works were evil. That's so right. Jesus testified to people, hey, your works are evil. Why? Yeah. Because he loved them. He didn't want to see them die yep. and go to hell. So that's yeah. what I did. I said, hey, this is sin, friends. You're going the wrong way. Put your faith in Jesus okay. Christ. But we had to address it. Yeah. Yeah. We had to address it. If the church don't address sinners, then they're going to think they're okay in their sin. That's they're right. Not. So we have to address that. You're not going to think right. you need a Savior unless you know you need to be saved from something. And we went head on with that spirit, like the, the, the BLM spirit, the LGBTQ spirit, uh, the abortion spirit. All those folks came out. When we made a statement saying we don't stand with Black Lives Matter, they all banded together to come protest us that day. You weren't saying black lives don't matter. Correct. You were just saying all lives matter. Well, right? and we, we said, said BLM black lives. Inc. doesn't matter. Right. Okay. The, the, the so corporation. Exactly. Or what, what we we even right. said black lives matter. Right. We yeah. even said there's black brothers from the church preaching, preaching with, with us. us. Yeah. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Of course we believe black lives matter. Sure. We're Christians. We right. believe all lives matter. Right. So as we're going along here, you, you, the crowd starts building. Okay. What's happening now? You're, you're starting to see... Or is this when the crowd turns bad? The crowd had already turned from yeah. the. They were already. They were already hell bent coming there. Yeah. But you know, we even tried dialoguing with people. There's a video you see an African American yeah. man and a, a, two ladies coming up talking to us. So we tried dialoguing. I said, just don't swear, don't be disrespectful. But of course, they started swearing. Yeah. They even broke. Someone even broke my stuff. 
So it was to the point where we're like, all right, we're not even going to dialogue with you anymore. We're just going to preach to you. Yeah, now the crowd's grown Growing, pretty big. Yeah. Yep, the crowd's exactly. swelling up there. Yeah, so you probably got several hundred people at uh, that point? Give or take, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then our, my pastor's like, okay, even my pastor coming to bring peace, he's like, let's get off the mic and try to have uh, conversations with right, people. one-on-one. One-on-one. And we did that for a while, but like I was saying, it wasn't working. They were still being very vile, uh, yeah. uh, getting in people's faces. I can remember one man, real big guy, getting in your face. I mean, it, it didn't matter what we tried to do. Like, I think about when Jesus says, I sing a song, and you did not dance. I sing a dirge, you don't mourn. It's like, whatever yeah. we did, you guys found something to be upset with. Swearing, cursing, yeah. spitting on us, lighting uh, pieces of merchandise that they bought from our business throwing it at the business, throwing it at us, throwing boxing gloves at us because they said they wanted to fight us. We were literally saying, repeating John so, 3.16 to them. And, so at right. this point, the crowd's turning violent. Yes. So it's, no, it's no longer words. They're, right. Now they're actually... Right. So how, how did you get out of there at this point? So it got to a point where no one was listening. The, 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 I felt, we felt like the gospel was just falling on dead ears, right. deaf ears, excuse me. And uh, they were not receiving and it. It just... It, we, we just could tell we were throwing pearls for no reason. Right. Uh, so we retreated back inside the business. Uh, it was about 30 of us at that time from the church in the business. Um, and we just heard a loud bang. We were actually looking outside at the crowd, staring them face to face like, how in the Lord's name are we getting out of here? <laughs> and uh, within about 10 minutes, we just heard a banging on the back door. And, and I thought it was protesters. And I was like, oh, geez, this is not what I wanted right now. So one of my brothers uh, follows behind me. We get the back door and it was police officers. And the police officers were like, somehow, some way, we're going to get y'all out of here. Mm -hmm. There was just enough police officers to get the women and children out. All the men basically had to walk out into the riot. Um, my, and then the brother who stood with me when I got the door walked with me to the car. And I was surrounded by people. Uh, they surrounded our car, started banging on the car. Um, I literally felt like the Lord hid me in plain sight in wow. that moment because I walked through... The, the crowd of people for about a block and a half and nobody recognized me. Oh, and God. then, right before I was about a half a block away from the car, everybody was like, he's right here. And then they sw like swarmed me. And then we just, you know, by God's grace, made it to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. so, so, all right. So you made it to the vehicle. Now you're leaving, yep. wondering what's going yeah. yeah. to happen to the deli as you're driving off. Yeah. So take us what happened in the next 12 hours. Uh, it, it became pretty, pretty understandable pretty quickly that we weren't going to be able to just walk back into our business anytime right. soon. So right. um, at, once they started releasing people from our church's address and saying, like, this is where the bigots live, go get them. Mm. Uh, and then they started releasing my, my brother's home address uh, and saying, like... So they're, they're actually posting your address yes. on social well, media. Well, my, my wife yes. even got messages. I forgot if it was messenger. They contacted her, and people walked up our lot, our big front yard, and took pictures of the front big window and said, I guess no one's here. Right. So they literally were walking up to my house. My house. Right. By God's grace, there was mold there and I had to move back when my mom yeah, wanted to fix it. House. So that by God's grace, we weren't there. But there are people literally walking up to my wow. window and taking pictures and yeah. we had death threats on our kids. I got yeah. kids, you know, I'm like... They started um, so tagging it, the business. It was just wild. They, share, they shared where my mother lives at, where I live at, my brother lives at, where our pastors live at. Pictures of my pastor's home. Wow. It was wild. They contacted all of our jobs. We lost our yeah. jobs within a couple of days. Because of what they said. Because of what they said. Yeah. Claim, all the claims about us, you know. Yeah. So you ended up, you know, there's a picture that you gave me of before the deli mm. and then after. Yeah. Right. And it looks like it's been through the war. Yeah. Right. But it was a peaceful protest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pause on the story. I want to know what's going through your minds at this point. Well, for me, I'm going to be honest with you. When people were telling us to go, my wife's like, we're going to leave. And I passed like, we're going to leave. I mean, I understood. But I was like, I got to come back here to preach. Yeah. I was ready to come still be the one and be out there witnessing to them uh, and sharing the good news about Jesus Christ and believing for a Paul to come out of there. Right. Because, I mean, Stephen preached and everyone hated him, but we know Paul came out of that. Yeah. Uh, God used Stephen to plant that seed. So yeah, I was ready to go back and witness. But when my pastor and my wife and them were saying, I had to go to my pastor's house at 5 in the morning the next day. Because they were putting his address out saying they're coming to his home. Things like that. It was crazy. And, you know, the, well, to backtrack a little, right after we left the Nini's Deli, when they even tried to hit me with a car, my wife was saying, I actually drove four hours to another state to help someone not do an abortion. 
So my 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 you're mind still, was still on Jesus. You're still in ministry. We're, we're still on ministry. My wife said, "We got to go. They're going to do an abortion. We help. We're trying to help her adopt the baby." And the young and then man, we come back. Yeah. Well, the young man who led the rioting, I tell him that uh, by God's grace, God used me to lead him out of an abortion about a month before. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. <laughs> the guy who led the riot. Yes. <laughs> The Lord used me to speak into his relationship with his girlfriend, and I told him that God has a plan for your wow. baby. Don't abort your baby. And his baby was, his wife had, a, or his, excuse me, his girlfriend had a disease where it was over 50% chance that his, ba his son wasn't going to make it. And they, the, all the doctors were telling him to go with the abortion. And I said, mm -hmm. if God gave you that seed, God will grow it and God will Come keep on. it. And, and I said, do not do that, bro. There's going to be blood on your hands. And they didn't, by God's grace. And his son is alive right now. Yeah. Praise God. Same Praise people God. try to... Same people who ran, who ran us down. Yeah, wow. So our heart was still on Jesus. Our mind was yep. still on Christ. And then I get home late that night, and my wife's saying that they're leaking her information, where my mother lives at, where I had to be at because of the mold in my house. Uh, yeah. All these crazy things. I end up driving to my pastor's house. So they're putting all this on social media. Social yes. media, yeah. Yes, and they are, the, the person who ran it, who ran the rioting has, uh, for, at our business, has a large Instagram following. I believe he's at like 60, 70,000 right. followers. Yeah. So when he was putting out messages, it was getting out to people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because he has a, he has a, a, big, a, a following. big following, yeah. yeah. And, and I think for me, I saw it as this wild redemption plan because for the 10, almost 10 years that we had been in, in business, like I said, I was preaching the gospel, I was sharing the message of Jesus Christ, but I believe that in my spirit, I wasn't sharing the full truth. Come on, right. So I believe that I was not telling folks that, you know, or I know that I wasn't the telling hell? folks that homosexuality is, is a sin, you know, even though I came from that lifestyle, but that was another sure. thing that I was scared to, to voice my testimony because I didn't want to offend anybody. And, and I wasn't telling people abortion is sin and all right. these things, but I was telling them God loved them. Yeah. And so in my heart, the Lord used me and the business to build this big following. And, but I knew, because the book of Ezekiel in chapter 3 says that if you don't warn a wicked man, that their blood will be on your hands. And so I knew in my heart, like, Lord God, I know I haven't preached the full gospel. And so I was always coming to folks being like, I have such a heavy burden on me. I got 30,000 Instagram followers, and I haven't preached the full gospel to them. Mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. so I felt like the Lord used this to redeem Praise my God. family and I because of me pardoning the message for all those wow. years. Right. Right. And so at that moment, I got to preach to every single one of those people, and by God's grace, got my hands clean. Amen. Yeah. And that's something I've always preached on, you know, like, yeah. you have a responsibility, church. Yeah. The Ezekiel 33 and chapter 3, he repeats it in 33, if you don't warn a wicked mm -hmm. person right. of their sins, then Ooh. they will perish for their sins, but right. blood will be on your yeah. hands. I will require that blood on your hands. And the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. I'm like, right. man, the church is not fearing God. Yeah, there's obviously concern because mm -hmm. their mother's house, sure. um, address is out um, there. And then they're leaking my pastor's information, and, there's, and my pastor, my wife, and them are like, we got to leave. So I'm in my What are we waiting house. for? For them to literally come in the house? I, I, my, yeah. and we talked to my brother. We're leaving the state. So within, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, I'm leaving my pastor's house with my family, a couple bags. He's leaving his pastor's, my pastor's leaving his house with a couple bags, likewise with my brother. Okay, so this is like 24 hours. Yep. Within, yeah, about exactly about 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. We, thought, we thought at first we were going to go to Florida. We have one uh, couple that we love dearly out there. Mm -hmm who offered their home to us. Um, you know, my brother had just lost his job very quickly. My sister-in-law, I lost the Two business. Two days later, we lost Yep, him. I lost the business. So I was like, we got to go somewhere, you know, that would take us for a while while we figure out our new life. So we yeah. have a, a dear brother and sister in the Lord there. They were willing to receive us by God's grace. We were headed there. We were in Georgia, and I get a message at a hotel saying, I know you're, in, and I, mind you, I had already switched my phone number because my messages were just out of control. And I get a message that says, we know you're in Georgia and we know you're on your way to Florida. Hope you enjoy. Wow. And uh, at that point, we were like, well, we're going to have to switch tracks or something. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they got this all yeah. pretty much queued up. Right. So we, we switched to move and started heading um, west. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was literally like living out the book of Acts. Yeah, we, yeah. we kept thinking about where Stephen gets stoned, yep. and then a great persecution breaks out against the church, all except the apostles left. Yep. And it says, but everywhere they went, they preached the gospel. That's right. So even though 
Uh, they persecuted us. They thought they were harming us. That's I right. even shared in a video, the church can't lose. That's right. Yeah. If you guys love us, we win favor with God and man. If you hate us, we're blessed because the blessed are those who are persecuted <laughs> yes, for <hallelujah>. righteousness. <laughs> and you guys Jesus. are actually going to grow us. Right. So when we got persecuted and left, we're here actually starting ministries by God's grace. That's right. We've been preaching on the streets, preaching at Planned Parenthoods. That's right. Uh, started a Bible study, God willing, a church. So it's not a victim story. It's a victory yeah. A victory story. story. We're the right. one. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a victory story. you get that? Story. Not a victim story. It's a victory a story. A victory story. That's right. Amen. I love it. That's yeah. right. We started a Bible study. We meet weekly. That's right. Uh, we're actually going through the book of Galatians right now. We preach weekly on the streets. That's right. Uh, we're looking to disciple uh, young men and women for Jesus. That's and right. we're planning a church, God willing, in January here. Our church is going to send our, wow. our pastor over here. And uh, I'm a pastor intern. My brother's in Bible college. So this is a launching pad for us. Yes. They launched yeah. us out. Well, I always <laughs> try to figure out how I was going to, you know, by God's grace, run the business and then fulfill my calling to pastor mm -hmm. folks in the name of Jesus. I, I didn't know how I was ever going to balance those things out. And I still believe that God's going to bless me and open up a door to start a business. Well, but, if it's a deli, let me know. So gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. But yeah, he, he projected me like years Mom. forward because I didn't know how I was going to get out, Mom. you know, or maybe he won't. And my full time would be, you know, ministry, which is my goal, sure. you know, but um, I'm like, like my brother said, I'm still in Bible college, but it totally projected yes, us, definitely, totally yeah. projected us because I never knew how I was going to make that transition. Right. I didn't even think it was possible. You know, you know what? I don't hear any, woe is me, no. oh man, this no. is horrible. Look what happened. I mean, it, it's right. just like we're sitting here talking about your life got wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, from anybody looking in would go, oh my gosh, they lost everything. Yeah. They made to move across the country. <laughs> but I, all I hear is like you said, yeah. you're not victim, Hallelujah. you're victors. Right. And I know you've encouraged a lot of people, but here's what I want you to do. Because there's a lot of people going, yeah, I can feel them kind of standing up sure. on the inside Praise going, God. it's time for me to be the one like these yeah. guys were. Yeah. So I want you to look at this camera, both of you, and, uh, and I want you to pray for the people. Yes. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And God, we pray for every person watching this video, God, hearing the radio, God, that they will be the one to stand up against wickedness, God. Come on. Starting with their family, God, the wickedness in their family, oh God. Maybe a, a, a niece or nephew or cousin or brother who's looking like they want to go the homosexual route, God. I pray that we will stand for righteousness in our family, oh God. I pray that we'll start with our neighbors and our community, oh God. Father, I pray that we will inter that the people hearing this will be will feel convicted, God, for maybe not preaching the full gospel, oh. but that they will go out in truth, oh God, and that they will preach the full message of Jesus, that he died for sinners, oh God. I pray for those hearing the message, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I speak Acts 1 8 over everyone. Listen. Hallelujah. Acts 1 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Ghost yes. comes on you. Thank you, Jesus. And you will be my witnesses. You will be my martyrs. Yes. In all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the Ooh. earth. So I pray that over everyone listening, receive that Holy Ghost power Hallelujah. to be a witness everywhere you go, family, friends, and to the nations. In yes. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I set my faith in agreement in Chicago is going to turn. Come on. Amen. That's right. We believe it. In this city. Believe God for your city too because we're in agreement with you. Yes, sir. And right. these Jose and Juan, they're agreeing with you. Yes. All right. So I know you know now what a great story this has been, Revival Radio TV. You guys, thank you for being thank the example you. of for being that, the one. You. Honor for us. Or being the two. <laughs> <laughs> or being the whole family. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's a great honor. So, all right. So go to check out the website, RevivalRadioTV.com and all the stuff there on our social media. And we'll see until then. We see you next time. God bless. Amen. And that was great. Come on, brother. Thank that you, Brad. Good, good. Come on. Yeah, it's our man. honor. Our honor. Hallelujah. Yeah, it was a awesome. dream come true, bro. Thank you.